I'd like to call the fourth regular meeting of the 2021 Common Council to order. Would the clerk please read the quote for the day? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Balance is not something you find, it's something you create. Thank you very much. Would the clerk please call the roll? Alder Person Bourne? Here. Alder Person Donahue? Here. Alder Person Feldy? Here. Alder Person Ackley? Here. Alder Person Phillips? Here. Alder Person Decker? Here. Alder Person Sorensen? Here. Alder Person Savaglio? Here. Alder Person Wolf? Present. Alder Person Mitchell? Here. There are 10 present. Thank you very much. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda is the approval of uh, minutes of our third regular council meeting held on May 4th and our first special council meeting held on May 6th. Alderperson Wolf. Motion to approve. Is there a second? second. Thank you for that motion and support. Second. The, uh, those minutes are before us. Are, is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 1.4 is confirmation of mayor's appointments. Uh, Attorney Adams. Thank you. Uh, this is an appointment uh, by the mayor uh, pursuant to general ordinance 31-14-15, creating section 2-420 of the Sheboygan Municipal Code relating to the position of the Director of Human Resources and Labor Relations. Mayor and the city administrator Hereby recommend that Vicki Schneider be appointed as the Director of Human Resources and Labor Relations for the City of Sheboygan, effective immediately. Thank you. Alder Person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. Motion to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Would the clerk please call the roll for approval? You can enter that in your board docs. Meredith, it's Mary Lynn. I'm gonna take it's gonna take me a while to get into board doc. Sorry, I vote aye. Thank you. Alder person Savaglio. Aye. <clears throat> Ten eyes. Motion passes. Congratulations, Vicki Schneider. Next item on the agenda is public forum. There is no one this evening. Thank you. Then we'll move on to uh, item 1.6, a presentation of our first quarter 2020 strategic action plan items and critical measurements by our administrator, Daryl Huffland. Daryl. Uh, thank you, Mayor Vandersteen. Uh, welcome, welcome to the 12th quarterly update of the city's 2017-2021 strategic plan. And again, thanks to City Clerk Meredith DeBruin for assisting tonight with the PowerPoint presentation. Uh, the strategic plan has six focus areas, quality of life, infrastructure and public facilities, economic development, neighborhood revitalization, <coughs> governing and fiscal management, and the sixth is communication. For the first area, which is uh, I guess one thing to note uh, before I get into the specifics is that many of the projects do occur over a multi multi multiple year time frame. Staff does work collaboratively with internal and external partners. Uh, staff tries to leverage all intergovernmental resources to maximize savings and output. Uh, staff utilizes public feedback for improvement and modifications and last uh, but not least, comparable, comparative <coughs> benchmarks with other municipalities are used to ensure our efforts remain fiscally responsive. 
First is quality of life. Uh, again, uh, the spreadsheet was included in your uh, Friday packet and posted. Uh, I'm going to be hitting the highlights. Uh, so I have three or four of each of the uh, action items and or uh, three or four of the critical measures uh, for each of the six. So the first is a uh, fire response within 380 seconds. Uh, that is a national standard. Uh, we hope to achieve that 96% of the time. Uh, in the first quarter of 2020, uh, we, were, we were able to uh, respond within 380 seconds, 96% of the time. Um, the, and again, the goal is uh, 90%. So we were very close to achieving 100% of our goal uh, for crime rates, uh, violent crimes, specifically uh, 0.40 per 1,000 population. Uh, this is only 15% of the annual annualized benchmark. Uh, this compares favoritively with uh, prior years. Uh, in 2019, 2018, uh, that uh, amount uh, uh, is almost half of what we've experienced in the prior uh, two years. For part one crime rates, property crimes, uh, we're, we're at point, we're at 3.8, which is 17% of our annualized benchmark. Uh, so we are below, in essence, 25% of the year has passed. We are below that benchmarking uh, amount. This is consistent with prior 2019 and 2018 years. For uh, poundage of prescription drugs collected, we're at 18% uh, with 216 pounds. And this is, uh, again, uh, consistent with what was experienced in 2019. Other quality of life uh, items are uh, our neighborhood associations. Uh, we are at 10. Uh, those, that 10th association uh, was approved last year. Uh, we've increased our goal to 11 for 2020. Uh, so far this year, we remain at 10. <clears throat> Uh, 17.49 trips per revenue mile for Shoreline Metro on its fixed routes. Uh, for the last three years, uh, we have been above uh, above our goal. Uh, so uh, no doubt uh, that will change for the second quarter of 2020. Uh, the city has a 42 years consecutive Tree City USA designation. As you know, this is the longest consecutive award uh, in the state of Wisconsin. We began work uh, on our 43rd year, so we will be notified uh, in less than a year of our hopefully next successful uh, applications. For infrastructure and public facilities, uh, Shoreline Metro is working with the Wisconsin Department of Transportation, Bay Lakes Regional Planning Commission, and the Federal Transportation Administration on a safety management system. Uh, uh, recently, uh, Derek Mink received notification that FTA has approved an extension to the end of 2020 in light of other challenges that many transit uh, authorities are experiencing. Uh, next is develop a citywide long-term stormwater management program. Uh, this initially was kicked off in 2018. Uh, city staff is currently reviewing uh, possible uh, changes to the city's ordinance associated with this, and we'll present a plan uh, later this year. Uh, again, as, as, as I mentioned, uh, this has been a long uh, process, uh, and I look forward to uh, hearing of, of the results and the staff's recommendations. For the pavement rating, uh, the city is at 6.25. This rating is valid for approximately a two-year period of time. So originally this rating of 6.25 was identified or established in 2019. Uh, our benchmark goal is 6.5. So we are at 96%. Uh, in comparison in 2017, the city was at 5.9. Uh, so we continue to make advances. The scale is on a one to 10 with one being failed, 10 being excellent and no maintenance required with that 10 rating. For economic development, uh, the number of ho new hotel rooms constructed, uh, again, construction is expected to uh, begin or commence uh, for Hampton Inn. Uh, 
Uh, last year, footings and foundations were installed. Um, prior to COVID-19, uh, construction was expected in early spring. Um, construction was put on hold, uh, but expected to commence uh, in June, uh, so soon. Uh, next is uh, transform former capsule property into the renovation district. Uh, this along with the adjacent Indian, Indian Avenue lots for the focus of an innovation <coughs> district. Currently, uh, the SC EDC, along with city staff, uh, is working on putting working on uh, submitting a U.S. Economic Development Administration grant. Uh, so Chad Pelishak, uh, his team, as well as the SC EDC team, uh, are working on uh, a very elaborate application. Uh, the foundation will be the official applicant of the SC EDC uh, due to COVID-19. Uh, you may be aware that the CARES Act included additional funding uh, and uh, what is anticipated or what the goal is to receive up to an 80% uh, project funding uh, through this uh, EDA grant. Uh, in the 2020 budget, uh, it included funding to construct an adjacent parking lot. However, <coughs> due to the timing of this project, will which will probably not commence at the earliest until spring of 2021, uh, the parking lot will be delayed until at least 2021. Uh, last is the annual ridership of the trolley. Uh, the trolley uh, is not operational the first quarter of the year, so that stands at 0%. I included this as a measurement simply so I could take the opportunity to discuss it. Normally, uh, the trolley uh, routes uh, begin to operate in June. Uh, it's anticipated that uh, this year, uh, the earliest of the trolley line would start is July. A uh, decision will be made sometime in June regarding uh, when uh, the trolley will commence its, its, uh, its route. Next is neighborhood revitalization. Uh, first uh, action item is to maintain neighborhood beat officer positions. Uh, this position, the city success, what, these two positions, the city was successful in obtaining a three year commitment 2019 to 2021 grant uh, by the federal government, and this is at 75%. Uh, annual spring cleanup event in partnership <coughs> with Public Works. Uh, this will be the second year. And again, this is done in conjunction with those 10 neighborhood associations. Uh, last year, I think uh, we kicked off this spring cleanup uh, in May. Uh, this year, uh, we will uh, start planning specific dates with the associations uh, for June. Again, those are typically held on Saturdays. Uh, next is uh, 38 abandoned vehicles towed. We're at 44% of the annual goal. Uh, the annual goal is 86. Uh, this is comparable to uh, prior years. In 2019, it was 34 for the first quarter. A little bit higher in 2018 at 51 vehicles. Last on this slide is 17 garbage complaints investigated and cited. This is through the Building Inspection Office uh, Six percent. Uh, I, I perceive this to be a good number in that the number of potential uh, violations or, or complaints are down. Uh, this compares uh, favorably to prior years. In 2019, this number was 98, and in 2018, this number was 264, so a significant reduction. Uh, again, the benchmark uh, when the strategic plan was developed a benchmark of 300 was identified on an annualized basis. So, so far, uh, a really a low number as far as number of complaints associated with garbage. Governing and fiscal management is the next category, uh, the fifth of the six. Uh, as you know, uh, recently the city uh, received notification from Moody's Investor Service that we are able to maintain our AA2 bond rating uh, the second item is enhanced cybersecurity. In addition to uh, our IT department being very vigilant and uh, uh, continuous effort to monitor, uh, the city did receive an award by our uh, insurance company, Civmic, uh, where they will fund a substantial cost associated with uh, a consultant audit, which will be conducted this fall. Uh, in 2020. The last focus area is communication. Uh, the city continues to see a steady increase 
in uh, users of all city social media outlets. So for all of our categories in line 123 to 127, we are at or above uh, those benchmarks. So Twitter, Nextdoor, Facebook, Nextdoor, and Instagram. Uh, again, it's good to see uh, electronic, especially uh, during COVID-19, that uh, the public continues to reach out and the city, again, is pushing out information through these social media outlets. Uh, next is 1,455 community survey responses. Uh, this, the benchmark was identified as 1,200. So we are 121%, uh, I guess, above that benchmark for the 2020 survey. This compares favorably to the 2019 and 2018 survey where 1,277 and 1,187 uh, uh, responses respectively occurred in 19 and 2018. Last is nine fire department community events. This is 20% uh, of the uh, annualized benchmark. 45 events is the goal. Uh, nine events uh, is favorable compared to 2019 and 2018 where six and one respectively uh, community events were held. Uh, again, due to COVID-19, uh, second quarter and potentially third quarter uh, could be impacted as far as number of community events. Uh, that concludes uh, the six different focus areas of our strategic plan for the first quarter. Uh, does the council have any questions regarding the highlighted action items or critical measures? Uh, if not, uh, thank you for your time. Uh, as city staff shares this information on the progress the city's made in advancing the goals of the strategic plan. Thanks again. Thank you for that report, Administrator Hoffland. Next, we'll go on to mayor's announcements. Uh, tonight, we have a proclamation to present from the office of the mayor of the city of Sheboygan. Whereas the public work services provided in our community are an integral part of our residents' everyday lives, and whereas the support of an understanding and informed citizenry is vital to the efficient operation of the public work systems and programs such as water, sewers, streets, highways, public buildings, and solid waste collection. And whereas the health and safety and comfort of this community greatly depends on these facilities and services. And whereas the quality and effectiveness of these facilities as well as their planning, design, construction, are vitally dependent upon the efforts and skills of public works officials. And whereas the efficiency of qualified and dedicated personnel who staff public works departments is materially influenced by the people's attitude and understanding of the importance of the work that they perform. Now therefore, I, Mike Vandersteen, Mayor of the City of Sheboygan, do hereby proclaim the week of May 17th through the 23rd of 2020 as National Public Works Week in the city of Sheboygan, and I call on all our residents and civic organizations to acquaint themselves with the issues involved with providing our public works, to, uh, to re recognize the contributions which public works officials make every day to our health, safety, comfort, and quality of life. Signed, Michael Vandersteen. And boy, this last uh, rainstorm, they really were out there working for us. I'd like to have David Beeble come up and present this to him. But while I have them up here, I'd like to also mention that the American Public Works Association has an award called the William J. Reinfrank Award, which recognizes a person or an organization that has had a far-reaching positive impact on the public works program, services, or policies through distinguished public service and commitment to their community in the state of Wisconsin. This award is named in honor of William Reinfrank, who was a president of the Wisconsin chapter in 1962, and he had a long career with the Milwaukee <coughs> Public Works Department. Well, I was recently informed that by the American Public Works Association that David Beeble has been selected as a recipient of the 2020 William J. Reinfrank Award. The current plan is to formally present the award at the 2020 APWA Wisconsin Chapter Fall Conference to be held early in November. David Beeble has worked for the City of Sheboygan Public Works Department for over 30 years. 
Throughout his, his career, he has served as a steward. David is a highly dedicated professional who has consistently executed major projects that have benefited our community. He's an exceptional leader who knows how to motivate his staff to strive for excellence, as demonstrated recently with successful completion of the $10.5 million City of Sheboygan renovation of City Hall. David served as the construction project manager, working collaboratively with a local contractor and his staff. He has a rich history of serving the public through public works and serving on various committees, both public and private. From leading the successful development and implementing the city's stormwater utility, managing local DOT projects, to executing improvements to the city's traffic signal modernization system plan, David's expert knowledge and perseverance never fails to impress. The City Hall project was also recognized by this organization as the project of the year for the APWA Wisconsin chapter and has now been nominated for the national award. David, thank you so much for everything you've done for this community. Congratulations on the awards. And here's a proclamation to keep as a small remembrance of this evening. Would you Appreciate like to say a few words? <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, it, it, it truly is a tremendous honor. The William J. Ryan Frank Award is a special award uh, at the state of Wisconsin, American Public Works Association. And I'm really humbled and glad to be uh, part of this and really to be recognized by my peers and to be uh, associated with so many past great award winners. As I mentioned, to be recognized uh, by the Public Works Association um, it's also an honor and privilege to serve the city of Sheboygan throughout my career. I'm grateful for the wonderful staff that has nominated me for this and their daily support that they provide to the community. As the mayor mentioned, this week is National Public Works Week. And what a great time to reflect on the ac accomplishments that our public works employees perform to the community. Each and every day, one of our, our public works employees are really considered daily heroes in my mind. They are a critical part of our recovery during this pandemic, and too often the DPW, that the work we provide to the community goes unnoticed or unappreciated. In times of adversity, it gives me great pleasure in knowing that as public works employees, we are essential and are recognized for the important contributions we provide in improving the quality of life and keeping our community safe and clean. During this crisis, the department was able to execute and start up the automated garbage and recycling collection program as originally scheduled and without delay. This new program was crucial, not only to the safety of our employees, but the community as well. This program was one of the largest in the history of the department as it impacted approximately 18,300 residential properties. I wanna personally thank and recognize some individuals that were key in this project. Jason Blaziola, Superintendent of Streets and Sanitation, Dave Groves, Supervisor of Streets and Sanitation. Brutz Metzdorf, Super, uh, Streets and Sanitation Lead. Andrew Bartell, the GIS Specialist Project. Don Sokolowski, Business Manager. Heather Burke and Melissa French, also of the Business Office. In closing, I just would really like to offer my sincere appreciation to the employees of the Public Works Department, but also to you, Mayor Vandersteen, for all your leadership and your support along with the city administrator, Daryl Hoffland, city department heads, and lastly, the common council members for your all, all of your cooperation. All of us together share in these accomplishments and it's a pleasure to serve the city of Sheboygan and to be part of the continued improvement of our great city. Thank you. County officials recently released a plan to reopen uh, that included strong guidance for business and residents. The county's plan to deal with coronavirus um, and taking care of the surge lessens cases seen. The municipalities and law enforcement will work to put stronger orders in place if necessary. The plan called a safe restart recommendation includes three phases. The county will, re will remain in each phase for at least 14 days. 
The county uh, releases advisory plan to limit the coronavirus, urging businesses to limit capacity at at-risk people and at-risk people should stay at home. We are now in phase one. Phase one says that if a business opens, they should follow the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation's best practices and uh, any recommendations specific to their particular type of business. Capacity in bars, restaurants, and non-essential businesses should be limited to 25% of capacity, and for outdoor events, people should stay at least six feet away from each other. Community member actions during this session are for community members to avoid going to places where safety measures are not in practice, to wash your hands with soap and water, use hand sanitizer, especially after touching frequently used items or surfaces, to avoid touching your face, to sneeze or cough into a tissue or inside of your elbow, to disinfect frequently used items and surfaces as much as possible, to strongly consider using a cloth face coverings while in public, particularly when using mass transit. And if you're sick, stay at home, do not go to work or school or any other place and to follow the advice of a medical practitioner and to follow public health quarantine isolation orders when ill or when you were close to uh, contact of someone who does have coronavirus. Business actions during this uh, phase should be that businesses that choose to open may do so using the general best practice guidelines from Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation and any sector specific recommendations that apply to the work being done. If your sector is not included in the CDC, has additional resources for sectors or organizations to reference. Limit capacity with non-essential businesses, bars, and restaurants to 25%. Events held outdoors should allow for people to maintain six feet of, of physical distance from others. To support online education, remote work options as able to encourage uh, curbside pickup to reduce in-store traffic and long lines. And if community members choose to gather socially, private indoor social gatherings should be limited to 10 people or less, again, with physical distancing. To encourage masking for both staff and consumers, Sheboygan has met three of the five criteria necessary to go on to the next phase. The criteria that have been met is a downward trajectory of positive cases, uh, Sheboygan County hospitals have the ability to treat all patients requiring hospitalization, and every resident who tests positive for COVID-19 is interviewed within 24 hours of the test results. The items that still need to be met is adequate PPE available to healthcare personnel. Uh, they call for an eight-day supply for all healthcare facilities, and that's currently not available and testing availability for residents with COVID-like symptoms. The Public Health Department is working to bring public testing opportunity in conjunction with the National Guard later uh, in the next week or two. And hopefully we'll be able to meet those last two and go on to phase two. Emergency management is also working to bring in extra PPE for healthcare partners uh, so they have that eight day supply on hand. Let's review some of the numbers. Last week, uh, we had uh, 68 positive cases. This week, we went up three new positive cases. We had uh, 17 active cases in the, in the county uh, last week. This week, we only have five, so 12 of those have recovered. Now we have a total of, uh, last week, we had 48 who had recovered uh, from the coronavirus. This week, that total is up to 63. That's an increase of 15 people. Last week, we had no hospital, I mean, one hospitalization. This week, we have zero. And there are three deaths. The Mead Public Library is currently offering pickup of library materials. The library will be open limited hours to the public starting on May 26th. From, uh, on Monday through Friday from 10 to 6 and Saturday 10 till 2. The third floor meeting rooms, the third floor rather, and meeting rooms will still be closed. The Senior Activity Center will still remain closed. And Mission Court will be conducting virtual hearings for the next few months. Our city parks will remain open. All city playgrounds will re remain closed till at least May 26th. 
All city park buildings and shelters and restrooms will remain closed until May 26th, and all other city uh, buildings will be remaining closed until the 26th. Thank you very much. We'll continue with the consent agenda. That'll include items 2.2 through 2.17. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to receive, all, uh, receive and file all <coughs> ROs, receive all RCs, and adopt all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on any of those items on the consent agenda? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Ten eyes. Motion passes. Item 3.1 is RO number 9 of 1920 of nine of 2021 by the city planning commission to whom is referred direct referral resolution number 21 of 2021 approving the capital improvements program as recommended by the capital improvements commission for the program period of 2021 through 2025 and adopting the program for implementation and recommends adopting the resolution alderperson born thank you mayor i make a motion to receive the ro and adopt the resolution. Is there a second? Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Those items are before us for any discussion. I have a question, Mayor Barb Feldy. Please go ahead, Barb. Um, I'm just worried about um, what COVID-19 is going to do to um, our capital improvements from 2021 through 2025. I know our budget was set for this year, um, but what kind of impact is that going to have um, for the next couple of years? Administrator Hoffman. Uh, Daryl Hoffman. Yes, I can respond. Uh, as you know, this, this is a plan uh, where significant amount of, of input was received by the respected department heads. Um, as we learn more uh, from the state, uh, including the federal government, uh, especially as it relates to federal and state funding as a major source of revenue for the city in 2021 and years beyond, uh, that will dictate, uh, because many of these projects are leveraging federal and state funding, whether some of these projects will proceed um, with the recent uh, rating by Moody's Investor Service, uh, they did take into consideration uh, the initial impact of COVID-19. Uh, luckily, the way in which uh, the state of Wisconsin and its municipalities are financially structured, uh, it has uh, less of an impact than many states uh, uh, and the experience that they are receiving uh, so uh, we, this is something, as, as you know, uh, city staff continues to monitor uh, our revenue sources. Um, and as we get closer to the 2021 budget, uh, that's where, uh, again, we will have more information from these other uh, government levels. Uh, and we'll be able to share with you possible changes in the 2021 to, uh, to 2025 uh, capital projects. I think it'd be premature at this point to make any recommended changes uh, until we receive additional information from these other uh, levels of government. Thank you, Daryl. Any other discussion? Mayor, I just wanted to make a comment also. <clears throat> Uh, I asked I asked kind of the same question that Barb did at the City Plan Commission, and the thing we have to remember is that these funds for uh, capital improvements uh, really wouldn't be borrowed until about this time next year. 
So depending on how this plays out with COVID-19 and other factors, uh, you know, we actually have up until um, uh, the end of the first quarter of next year uh, before we would, would be borrowing these funds. So uh, we have an opportunity for this to play out for quite a while before we'll actual, actually be borrowing the funds. But I feel comfortable in approving the plan subject to conditions early next year. Thank you. Thank you for that information. Any other discussion? Hearing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Older person born? Ten eyes. Motion passes. Items uh, 3.2 and 3.3 will be referred uh, to various committees. Under resolutions, item 4.1 is resolution number 22 of 2021 by Alderperson Sorensen and Decker authorizing the application for the Coronavirus Emergency Supplemental Funding Program Solicitation for Fiscal Year 2020 Formula Grant Solicitation. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to suspend the rules and adopt the resolution. Is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed with your motion. Second. Okay, we have the motion on. We have a motion and a second on the floor. Is there any discussion on the motion? <clears throat> Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Ten eyes. Motion passes. Items 4.3 through, through 4.6 will be referred to various committees. Under reports of committees, item 5.1 is RC number 21 of 2021 by the Finance and Personnel Committee. Two was referred RC number 301 of 1920 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom was referred RO number 155 of 1920 by the finance director submitting the operational and organizational assessment report dated February 7th of 2020 with regard to the city of Sheboygan finance and human resources departments, which was prepared by Clifton Larson Allen LLP pursuant to resolution number 206 of 1819 adopted on April 15th of 19. Alderperson Donahue. I uh, move to receive the report of the committee and adopt the resolution. Second, Lauren. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? <clears throat> Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Ten eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.2 is RC number 22 of 2021 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom was referred resolution number 17 of 2021 by all the persons Wolf and Donahue, authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute the first amendment of uh, redevelopment agreement between Aurora Healthcare Inc. and the City of Sheboygan with regard to the property located at 2629 North 7th Street and recommends adopting the resolution. Alderperson Donahue. I move to receive the report of the committee and adopt the resolution. Second, Warren. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Ten eyes. Motion passes. 
Item 5.3 is RC number 23 of 2021 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom was referred resolution number 18 of 2021 by Alder Persons Donahue and Bourne authorizing an advance from the Capital Project Fund to the TID number 16 Capital Fund. Alder Person Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive the report of the committee and adopt the ordinance. Second, Bourne. <coughs> Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on that motion? Mayor, I had a question for our finance director, Marty Halverson. Go ahead. Marty, perhaps you could explain, Marty, perhaps you could explain uh, kind of this unique way of doing this, uh, this transfer. Thank you, older person, Barton. Uh, the, uh, the advantage of doing an advance versus a transfer uh, really comes into play in tax incremental districts and tax incremental financing. Uh, a transfer is not intended to ever be paid back, whereas a advance uh, is intended to be paid back. So the, the goal here would be that we advance the funds uh, to the TID, and then when the TID becomes financially solvent and or uh, starts to generate increment that it is capable of paying the advance back, it, it does that, and then therefore at the end of the uh, TID's life, uh, it has let's say financial means at the end that gets split amongst tax, uh, the taxing jurisdictions, whereas if it was done as a transfer, uh, the city would be funding it solely on its own instead of sharing in that. Thank you very much for that information. Is there any other discussion? Chad Pelichek? I just want to say what Mar off of what Marty said in TID 16, which is the downtown TIF district, it, the project plan included the demolition of the armory, armory as a um, expenditure within a half mile radius. So that allows us to spend dollars outside of the district as long as it's within that half mile radius. So we are in compliance with uh, that TID uh, project plan. Thanks for that information. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Ten eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.4 is RC number 24 of 2021 by the Public Works Committee, to whom was referred General Ordinance Number 1 of 2021 by all the persons Wolf and Sorensen, reestablishing the bulkhead line along a portion of Broughton Drive north of the Sheboygan River in the city of Sheboygan. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to receive the RC and adopt the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Who seconded that one? Ryan did? Okay. Ryan did. I did. Thank, thank you. <clears throat> oh, you're welcome. Older person Mitchell. There we go. Ten eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.5 .5 is RC number 25 of 2021 by the Licensing Hearings and Public Safety Committee. To whom is referred direct referral general ordinance number 4 of 2021 by Alderperson Sorensen and Donahue, amending various sections of the Municipal Code as to update them to conform with state statutes and temporarily reduce fees for various licenses related to the serving of fermented malt beverages and intoxicating liquor to the minimum required by statute and to temporarily waive fees for sidewalk cafes and all reductions in fees applicable for the licensing year that includes July 1st of 2020 and recommends adopting the ordinance with amendments. Alderperson Sorensen. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to receive the RC and adopt the substitute ordinance. Second. Thank you for the motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Ten eyes. Motion passes. Uh, under general ordinances, item 6.1 will be referred to the Public Works Committee. Next is other matters authorized by law. Attorney Adams. 7.1 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2022. That'll be referred to licensing hearings and public safety committee. 7.2 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2021 and April 14, 2021. That'll be referred to the licensing hearings and public safety committee. 7.3 is a resolution by Alderpersons Wolf and Sorensen authorizing a relocation order in the city of Sheboygan, Sheboygan County, Wisconsin. That'll be referred to the Public Works Committee. Next is an anticipated closed session. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to convene in closed session under the exemption provided in section 19.85 sub 1 sub E Wisconsin stats where competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session related to the possible sale of the city owned property known as parcel number 59281102670. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Would the clerk please call the roll for closed session? Ten eyes. Motion passes. Um, so the council will plan to adjourn in closed session. This will end our broadcast for this evening. Thank you very much. We'll take a short three-minute recess and reconvene in the, in the uh, adjoining room. Thank you.